In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of marriage. For you are the author of marriage. Today, we ask for your special blessing on all married people. The scripture says that what God has joined together, let no man divide. We pray that you keep all married people together. Increase their love for each other. Prosper them. Protect them from the evil ones. Bless their children and provide for them. For all married people who have no children, bless them with children. Grant healing, O Lord, to all sick couples. Heavenly Father, restore the marriages of all of all those who experience marital crisis and give all couples the grace of mutual understanding. Bless Catholic Marriage Forum. Through these apostolates, let many marriages be saved. Bless the participants of this conference tonight. May your Holy Spirit guide our today's speaker, Sir Andrew Jobo. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lady Queen of Spouses, pray Amen. for us. In the name Praise of the us. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, I welcome you, dear participants, to our conference tonight. I now invite the moderator of the day to take over. Dr. Peter Kolawole. Over Thank to you. you very Thank you very much, Father. Uh, Father, I want to know what is going to be the time lag that we allow the speaker to speak. 30 minutes, then question and 30 answer. 30 minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, fathers, Reverend Fathers, all the doctors, professors, everybody at home, I welcome you to this very big occasion. As you know, there are so many problems with marriages nowadays. And number one, is it that about finance or about sex? Tonight, we have a presenter who is going to help us to look at the mystery behind sex. And what is it all about in our family? Is it really necessary? Or is it a thing we can avoid? Can we all be Reverend Father? Uh, our dear presenter, over to you. I want you to, within the next 30 minutes, I want you to help us uh, uh, clear this. Uh, 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 we want you to solve the problem generally so that at the end of the day, all married couple will know the importance of sex in our marriages. Thank you very much. Over to you. Father, can you hear me? Can somebody yes. hear me? Yes, I hear you clearly. All right, thank you very yes. much. I was wondering whether I can get on. Thank you. Yes, we can hear um, you clearly. Please, everyone, mute yourselves, please. Mute yourselves, please. Mute yourselves. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. I haven't met you, Father, but um, Dr. Ashikeni introduced me. I I think this uh, topic you gave me to talk on is uh, very interesting, but also it's a, an interactive kind of thing. Video, I will talk video. for a few minutes. I think I said I was video, but I will forget my uh, I will forget my Please, Hello? Look, please, please mute yourself. If you are not ready to mute yourself, Father will pull you out of this uh, meeting, please. It's Thank a very you, serious, Father. important topic. Uh, the topic we have today, as I said, I'm hoping it will be more of interactive than uh, me just talking. I'll just talk for a few minutes. I hope I would have sensitized us to the extent that everybody can participate. The topic we have today is how Christian couples can maintain a healthy sexual life in their marriage. Um, how do we define, I start by defining a good Christian couple, attempt to. We find good Christian couples in a marriage witnessed by a priest or a pastor. We, or, 
as a man of God, between which each spouse must be honest about who they are, what they are feeling and thinking, and about their successes and failures. There should be nothing hidden from each other. They should be able to trust each other to tell the truth always. Now, the main issue today is their sexual life. For married Christian couples, sexual intercourse for procreation, pleasure, and intimacy is expected. It is always important to remember that God in the Bible not only forbids sex outside marriage, but rather commend sex within marriage. In the seventh commandment, we're explicitly, explicitly told, you shall not commit adultery. So any sex outside marriage is not permitted by God. Following that, I would like us to understand there are some basic principles. I'll name four of them, which can assist Christian couples to maintain a healthy sexual life. One, that sexual intimacy in marriage is for God's glory. There are people who think sex is, um, uh, let me use the word, dirty, but we should know that sex done within marriage is for God's glory. Sexual intimacy in marriage unites the couple unites them. Sexual intimacy in marriage is expected to be regular. And finally, that se sexual intimacy in marriage is to be the order oriented. By order, I don't mean ORD, but order. The other person is the primary aim in, a, in sexual intimacy in a Christian marriage. Let me take them one by one. Sexual intimacy in marriage is something that um, is for God's glory. When God created Adam and Eve, he created them in his own <laughs> Hello. He created them in his own image as gendered sexual beings. He gave them sex, not what we see today about saying some people have no gender. The world is going somewhere we don't, we Catholics especially don't understand. We are not sexless beings, but we exist as men and women having different sexes. This means that our sexuality is not a mistake. God does not make mistakes. There is goodness to how God created and designed man and woman in his own image and likeness. St. Paul goes to great lengths to teach about glorifying God with our bodies. He tells us that God, the body, in 1 Corinthians 6, 13, he says the body is not to be used for sexual immorality, but to serve the Lord. They're in the same chapter 19 and 20. He said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, but you belong to God. He bought you for a price. So use your bodies to glorify God. In essence, I'm saying that when we have sex in marriage, we are glorifying God. Anybody that tells you otherwise, I think is uh, misleading. The Bible makes it that clear. And Paul tells us that. Two, the second principle that is very important is that sexual intimacy in marriage unites couples together. Intimacy in marriage is not only desired to bring God's glory, but also to unite husbands 
and wife in one flesh relationship. No, in Genesis no, no, no. 2, 24, hello, am I still with, Father, I'm still, am I still with you? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. In Genesis 2, 24 and 25, we are told that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united, united to his wife, and they become one. In 25, it further says, the man and the woman were both naked, but they were not embarrassed. It is when you... Sex is God's way of making two people to reciprocally say to one another, I am yours completely, permanently and exclusively. When you are married to a man or a woman, you have just made a covenant with him or her, telling her you belong to him or her. I take the third principle that sexual intimacy in marriage needs to be regular. Some people think it's like um, Sunday, Sunday medicine or something like that. Since sexual intimacy is for God's glory and reminds us of a couple's one flesh relationship, then it makes sense that sexual intimacy should be a regular part of married life. Then Paul in 1 Corinthians 7 to teaches us, but because the but because there is so much morality, immorality, sorry, every man should have his own wife and every woman should have her own husband. Prior to that, men and women seek pleasure in different people. That means it is understood that man and woman need to have sex. But it says you should have your own wife and your own husband. That is when it becomes the right thing to do. Anything otherwise becomes adultery. Okay. What is that? The is fourth that? principle I want to bring forth today is that sexual intimacy in marriage is to be the order oriented. By order, I mean the other person, not O-R-D-E-R. St. Paul goes on in 1 Corinthians 7, three to four, to describe sexual intimacy within marriage in terms which runs against the norm in most African cultures today. Here, generally, it is believed that the husband has paid a bright price and so owns the woman. But as Christians, we should know that neither husband nor wife possesses authority over his own body, over their own body, but rather, it belongs to the other person. A man, verse 3 of that uh, 1 Corinthians 7 says, a man should fulfill his duty as a husband. And a woman should fulfill her duty as a wife. And each should satisfy the other's needs. A wife is not the master of her own body, but her husband is of her body. In the same way, a husband is not the master of his own body, but his wife is. This may sound strange to us in Africa, but or in Nigeria, let me not assume that uh, uh, all Africans think that way. This Bible passage I just read reminds us that sex is not solely about you and your own needs. Sex is not about your self-actualization or satisfaction. Rather, sex is meant to be about bringing pleasure and love to your spouse. There are certain things we shouldn't do, Christian couples. We should never use sex as a weapon of bribery, blackmail, or punishment. Bribery, for example, a woman needs something, and as the husband gets home, she's well dressed, she's nice food, alluring, and he goes to bed with her. And at the end, he says, Oh, there's one I should be coming. It's 50,000. You have bribed the man with that. Or you blackmail and punish them. Men uh, often do that, and women also do it. 
you punish your husband by denying him sex or the man who feels it's a man's world, he can go out to uh, other women, but you as a woman cannot deny you of sex. I've had occasions in my counseling uh, uh, this thing where a woman says, my husband has not touched me for six months. He has just refused to touch me. You have deliberately denied the woman of that right given to her by God or vice versa. In 1 Corinthians 7, 5, St. Paul admonishes us, do not deny yourselves to each other unless you first agree to do so for a while in order to spend your time in prayer. But then resume normal marital relations. Normal marital relations mean actually the language. It's just it's language it's to resume your sex life. In this way, you will be kept from giving it to Satan's temptation because of your lack of self-control. Yes, the other party that you are denying of is sex. Now, you, have, you, you, you did this uh, uh, for prayer purposes, but you are carrying it to an extreme end. And the other partner is tempted to go elsewhere to look for sex. Even though Paul does not specifically or specify the amount of time or frequency for couples to have sex, but it is clear that couples should not indulge in marital abstinence lightly. When there's need for devotion for, to prayer, mutual agreement is the framework that St. Paul sets up in order to help protect couples from the temptation by Satan. These uh, four principles I've mentioned, if we try to live by them, we will find that we will have a happier life. Uh, just, sorry, uh, I'm looking at my script, okay. So if we can abide by these four principles, we find that as our life as spouses will be um, highly enhanced. Uh, as I said, most importantly, we should not use sex as a weapon. I'll just conclude that when Christian couples live with these few three, four principles in their sexual intimacy, the focus is no longer on the person and their needs, but on the other person, that is the spouse, and their needs and desire. The end result is that there will be boundless opportunities for mutual pleasure, enjoyment, and joy. At that time, at that stage, sexual intimacy is completely transformed from a mere physical act to lovemaking. And that is what Christian couples are meant to enjoy, lovemaking. I want to thank you for your attention and may God bless our marriages through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is wonderful. Amen. This is really wonderful. Because Thank we you, still Father. have some... Amen. About, almost about six more minutes. And uh, a quickly round off. And uh, let me try and see if I can recap using the remaining four minutes. Okay. Father. But I, ca I, cannot, I cannot be like you. <laughs> because you try to tell us that uh, we should look out for the basic principles. And you said that uh, when it comes to intimacy, that is a, a, a way of giving glory to God. And you make sure that you, you wait for that to tell us that with sex, it brings about unity of couple. I also said you made mention of something like it should be regular. Maybe you will throw more light on that. That is, every man should love his own wife. And you spoke about the fourth one as other oriented, not O R U D E, but the other person's orientation that is uh, not, not, not the husband, 
nor the wife have authority over his or her own body. And you quickly say that what we should not do is not to use bribe, but to use sex as bribe. When you give me sex, I buy you rapa. If I'm if I'm right. And you yes, say we I should know. avoid using sex as uh, like a blackmail. Or Maybe you, you or punishment. Yes. And uh, and finally you say we should not deny each other that pleasure. And each time we do the, the right thing, we are worshiping God, and which is what you now summarize as love making. I think yes. I'm right. Yes, Father. Uh, so let's. I'm not a father. I'm a. I'm, a, I'm an engineer. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, that's the moderator. He stopped my voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we are about sixty-six in the in in this meeting, and uh, we should be picking questions now. Um, or contributions. And uh, before oh. the question, moderator, yes, let me just make. Uh, before the question, let me make contribution very briefly in the next okay. two or three minutes. In addition to okay. what the speaker has said, so that we cannot take questions at once. Okay, Father. Uh, thank you so much, our distinguished speaker. You have done justice to, to the topic. You told us about. Um, the role of sexuality in marriage, you know, very beautiful things about it. I just want to make a few additions, just a contribution. And that contribution comes from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2362, which says that marital intercourse is noble and honorable. Hello established by God so that spouses should experience pleasure and enjoyment of God. So that spouses should experience pleasure and enjoyment of body and spirit. When it comes to sexuality in marriage, the church is very positive to it. Especially after Second Vatican Council, the church speaks, you know, takes sexuality in marriage in high exile. It describes it as something that is sacred, something that is honorable, something that is very noble. Of all human actions in the world, sex in marriage is the most honorable, is the most noble. Now, there is a twofold purpose of sexuality in marriage, according to the teaching of the church. One is the procreative purpose, that is, marital sex, you know, plays the role in creating new human life. So, through marital sex, a new life is being created. And that is why many theologians of the church describe parents you know, as people who participate, as people who cooperate with God in the act of creation, because when they engage in sexual acts in the context of their marriage, a new life is born, a new life begins. And that new life, you know, that act of procreation, that procreative act goes with education of the children, that parents don't only engage in sexual art, but they also, you know, they educate their children. That is why St. Thomas Aquinas will say that human beings are not like animals. In animal world, you see the animals having their population. After that, everybody goes his own way or whatever. You know, yeah, they, uh, the female one take care of the of the younger ones, but the male one is nowhere to be found. In some animals, the little ones, you know, they try to survive. St. Thomas Aquinas will say, among human beings, parents don't only engage in these sexual acts, but they also raise a family. They take responsibility. Pope John Paul II says that sex goes with responsibility. Any man who decides to marry, engage in this marital sex, must be ready for responsibility. So this 
Second purpose of this sexuality in marriage is that it brings about bond between the husband and the wife. There is this unity purpose. So sex in marriage has a procreative purpose, bringing children into the world. It also has unity purpose, uniting the husband and wife that they may become truly one in flesh and in body. So that's the contribution, one in flesh and in spirit. So that's the contribution I want to make. We can now begin to ask our questions and make further comments. Moderator. I don't know if I thank can ask Chris, if I'm not. Thank you very much, Father. Father, your hand is up. You are recognized, yes. Father. Go on. Yes, mine. I want to begin by appreciating the presenter. And it's very, very sensitive when it comes to sexuality in marriage or conjugal union or conjugal love. And just as Father said, that there are two dimensions of the conjugal act. The unity, which is the life-giving, love-giving rather, and then the procreative, which is the life-giving. And every sexual act must promote these two dimensions of sex, of uh, the conjugal act. And couples must also understand that there is more to sex than just the communion of bodies. There is more to sex than communion of bodies. It's also the communion of soul and spirit. And that is why that which is legitimate in the act of marriage is also part of what makes marriage sacramental. And so it must be done, just like Father said, as something honorable and something noble. When we talk about the sacramentality of marriage and also the sacramentality of sex, it goes beyond just the act because it represents and reflects something about Christ's union with the church. Christ is the bridegroom. The church is, is, is his bride. And Christ gave himself whole and entire to the, to the church on the cross in a bloody manner and at the Last Supper in an unbloody manner. And on the cross, he said it is consummated. And you know, that is the word also used for what? The consummation of marriage. That's the, the conjugal union of, of marriage of the couple when after their wedding. We also use that word consummation. And Christ used the word on the cross, it is consummated. And then in the unbloody manner during the Last Supper, he gave his body, say, take this, all of you, and eat. Take this and drink. And at the mass, the priest will say, the body of Christ, and you say, amen. Now, when it comes to sex, couples also do the same because they give their bodies to each other. It's like saying, take my body, just like we are given the body of Christ at mass in the world, in the Eucharist. So couples also do that, and they must see this as something noble and something honorable. And just as the presenter said, that it is not something that you use to win favor for yourself or you deny your, 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 your spouse that legitimate right of, of his. It must be something discussed and communicated well when you really want to abstain from it for something higher, maybe for a spiritual good or for a spiritual purpose. But it shouldn't be for a long period of time. And it shouldn't be a weapon to deny or to win favor and all that. Because that would be a wrong understanding of what sex is all about. And that has made a lot of couples to begin to desire it outside because of such attitude. So couples must understand that there is something deeper and fundamental about the conjugal act than just the communion of bodies or just for pleasure and all that. It is not only for pleasure. Because in natural family planning and also in the teaching of the church, they say that every conjugal act must be open to life. And that is why when you practice the natural family planning, you understand that the, in, the, in the circle of the woman, they will have the fertile days and the infertile days. And you should understand when you want to achieve pregnancy, when to, to meet and when to copulate. And then when you want to avoid pregnancy, also when you need to uh, abstain from, from sex. 
this has to be done in such a way that both of you will communicate perfectly and understand yourselves. Another thing, too, that is happening is the fact that some don't understand that a lot of rape happens in the family. A lot of rape happens among especially when the other party feels that he needs it and wants to really have his way without even understanding or uh, regarding the condition of his or her spouse. Both of you are for each other. You are united, body and soul, for life. If there's anything that has to come between you, you have to communicate it. If you really need to copulate or you need to meet with your wife or have the intercourse, it has to be communicated in such a way that both of you will agree and also prepare yourselves for it. So I think this topic is very, very sensitive, but also another aspect that we need to emphasize so that couples will understand uh, what it takes, what it is, and how noble and honorable it is in the married life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father. We really appreciate this contribution. So solid. Body of Christ, amen. So when you and your, your wife are together, you should also know you are doing similar thing that the priest does at the altar. So who's contributing next? I didn't see any hand up. Mine here. is a question. Let's take this mine is a here. question. Okay, your question. So the question is due to father or to the presenter. Please go ahead. Um, uh, although I joined the, the 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 conversation a bit late, so um I'm kind of asking a question based on um First Corinthians chapter seven, where um the scripture was is talking about um the 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 wife and the husband um maintaining sexual uh, purity, like in a case where they want to involve in a kind of um spiritual activities like prayer or what have you. So I have not heard anything being mentioned in that aspect. So I don't know if light can be thrown in that aspect because um, I have not heard anybody mention it. And the scripture says both of them need to keep themselves uh, the, in agreement. Then they'll keep themselves pure. Since we are talking about purity of um, sexuality in marriage. So I don't know if light can be thrown on that. Your, your you. name, sir. Your name, sir. I'm from where? Okay, my Okay, my name is um, Mr. Victor from Kaduna Ag Diocese. Thank you. Any other questions so that we, we bridge all okay. the major uh, questions okay. together? I all hope right, my no, presenter... This one is one and a half one. Okay, who is next? Padretto, please, uh, let's take it one after the other. So okay, the Father, speaker thank you. can respond to this question. Others can comment before we take the next question. Oh, thank you so much, Father. So, moderator, over to you. I mean, uh, presenter, over to you. Yes, I talked about that particular um, aspect. Yeah, first. Yes, and uh, Father, I mean, I thought maybe because he was late yes, um, he said in so. joining. Yeah, I talked about it. It's very, very pertinent. That, and but it, the same um, section told us that um, we should. Uh, endeavor to do it in an agreement. You are very correct. I read that passage at that time, which um, I, I just want to get it back and read again for you. I talked about it because it's very, very important that people know you can abstain for spiritual purposes, but then you must agree at the end of the day, the uh, duration, let me use the word duration, Otherwise, it will defeat his purpose, and the man or woman will now become uh, tempted by Satan. I think I mentioned that in this talk, and I think uh, uh, Father also talked about it. That um, is Corinthians five, uh, seven five, and it says, mm -hmm. "Do not deny yourselves to each other, unless you first agree to do so for a while, in order to spend your time in prayer." but then resume normal marital relations. In this way, you will be kept from giving in to Satan's temptation because of your lack of self-control. I spoke about that. I'm further elaborated further on it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Father, any so, contribution? Please, sir. 
um, thank you. The thank you, our guest speaker, for three more lights on that too. You know, there is also a trend that goes on. A woman met me some time ago, telling me that she was fasting, and the husband was demanding sex. So because she was fasting, she denied the husband sex, saying that the sex is going to defile maybe her fasting. God will not answer her prayer because the husband now asked for sex. You see, there are so many misconceptions. Sections, of yeah. Recently, yeah. uh, some time ago, I made a video teaching on this <clears throat> misconception on sex. Many married people have misconceptions. And the social media is not helping matter. If you go to Facebook, mm -hmm. go to Twitter, many of that, you see everybody is now an expert in sexology. <laughs> if there is anything like that, young many young mm -hmm. people are not teaching sex. They open their mouth and see all kinds of things, all kinds of trash about sex. And you see many people listen more, listen to these bloggers. All those people that carry cheer and uh, that have school in, in social media, many of them have school. So people listen to them. If a priest I'm like me or Father Joseph makes a video on sex or whatever or marriage, how many views will you see? Maybe you see 100 views. Or, but when, the, when those people come and open their mouth and say all kinds of hey, nonsense and bad sex, they will get 200,000 200, views. You know, that's what people want to hear. Yeah. People want to hear those the names of the private parts, calling the names, and many of those. So people are eating, but when it comes to the truth, you know, many people are not ready to hear. So concerning that sex and fasting, it's in line with the question someone asked. You will not say because you are fasting, you go and deny your husband's sex. Spiritual activity, let it be an agreement. You and your husband should agree. Okay. For one week or for one month, I'm going to fast. So in this period of fast, we argue that we are not going to indulge in sex. If there is no that agreement and you now go and do it, impose it on <coughs> the man. When the man wants sex, you say, no, I'm fasting. My dear, there is no virtue behind it. There is no grace behind it. Sometimes we fast without grace. You know, somebody fasting without grace, it could be someone... You know, there is no food because there is no food. You now declare fasting. You want to fast six to see. Instead of you to say there is no food and look for someone to give you money, you see, you now bring in fasting and uh, use it to cover it. It happens when it comes to sex and marriage too. Maybe you are tired of the whole thing. The, the husband is not doing it well or what. You now declare yourself fasting <laughs> for one week or one month. That's no. There should be an agreement. If there is no that agreement, there is problem. All right. But I want to ask yeah. something. Yeah. See, I I am happy we are talking about this because sometimes we begin to present sex as if it's something dirty, yes. as if it's something terrible, as if it's something sinful. We have mentioned it here, and it's good we take this home. It is something noble and honorable. It is something part and parcel of what makes it legitimate in marriage. And since it is part of what makes it legitimate in marriage, it is also part of the sacramentality of marriage. So even if couples want to pray and the rest of them, and then they meet and give themselves to each other, because that is what uh, the conjugal act what brings them to do to unite them better, to become that unity of bodies. I don't see anything bad in it, even when they want to pray. God has ordained it in marriage, and even when you want to pray that you meet with your husband and you have it in a legitimate way, it doesn't make it sinful, nor will it stop your prayers from being answered. So I think it's good we emphasize on this, that for people to begin to use it as an excuse that they want to pray, they want to fast, and the rest of them. We're not stopping people from fasting and from praying, but let us stop begin, let us stop painting uh, the conjugal act as if it's something dirty, as if it's something impure or something sinful. It is something holy, it is something noble and honorable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. 
I'm expecting a, a female in the house to contribute before we ask another question. <laughs> because sometimes they said, uh, he, he cannot bring me, I cannot come. Because of that, it's, it's, it's making, me, making it painful to me. I'm not going to give myself again. Something like that. We had all this. So any contribution from any female? I know of uh, our... Hello. Yeah, yeah Hello. I'm listening. We are listening. Yeah. Dorothy, sister, Dorothy. What I will say okay, in sister. this case is, mm -hmm, is uh, communication is very, very important in the arts. But according to Maxine, emphasize on, emphasize on that. You have to agree so that it will make it more efficacious and uh, a holy act. And sometimes I feel that the, it could be um, like those that have no issues. They can do it for enjoyment's sake. So for that reason, they may decide not to do for some time, just for um, making themselves happy, not necessarily for the unification, unifying factor. So what I want to say here is communication is very important so that the two will agree on how long and why. So that's my contribution to that. Hello? Perfect, ma. Perfect, ma. Thank you very much. Any other contribution? Listen, I wanted to like... Uh, Okay, Abuja, Abuja, come in. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. And I want to thank the presenter, you know, the presenter this evening, yeah, and also the priest who brought the issue of um, procreation to the topic because um, sex, no matter at what age, must be open to life. Yeah. And that's where I come in to see it because sometimes you <coughs> have no problems. Issue of uh, sexual act. It has some don't the women yeah. are afraid of pregnancy. Yeah. Sometimes they avoid um, sex in marriage because they don't want to be pregnant. And mm. the church teaches the use of I, I like to cut people. in, sir. I like to cut in, sir. There's bread down. Please stop this interference. Mute so that the children will not be disturbing us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Continue, thank Abuja. You. Yeah, I was just saying that um, the issue of um, pregnancy is that most women are sometimes um, afraid of sex, sexual act, because they, they don't want to be pregnant or they don't want to have more children. So, uh, and the church teaches that the um, issue of uh, contraceptive is not acceptable. So what you see that today, young couples, sometimes they go against the church teaching, you know? So this is an issue that should be brought up in, you know, so issue like this. So at what point, you know, um, do, because of issue of pregnancy, and the woman refuses. So how do we go about this? I don't know if I can say something on this. Okay, Father. Fa Father, you. go ahead. Father, go ahead. Uh, the other, the person which I can recognize your hand, I'll call you later. That is Mr. Martins. Okay, I want to thank uh, the person from Abuja that asked this question. Martin, and, you know, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, sorry, there are some interferences. Please, uh, some of you uh, mute yourselves, please. This is very sensitive and very important in the sense that the church teaches on natural family planning. Yes, yes. Sir. And in natural family planning, the woman plays a very vital role in achieving the success of that uh, planning, in the sense that it's a, it's a process that helps the woman to know her menstrual, her cycle. Because the key to natural family planning is for the woman to know her cycle and to be able to interpret the signs. There's what we call the sensation, the, no, the observation, notation, and interpretation of the chart. And in natural family planning, we get to understand that the woman is not fertile all through her cycle. There are what we call the fertile days and the infertile days. Because the infertile days begins from what? From after her 
her peak, which is the ovulation. Then after two, three days, then before the next menses, the woman is very free and infertile at that period because uh, others call it the dry period. And at that time, the, the, the vagina is dry and whatever sexual intercourse they have, the acidic nature of the vagina does not allow the sperm to be viral. So it's good we all, we, people begin to teach uh, the NFP and also uh, get involved and get informed about it so that the woman knows when she's fertile and when she's not fertile. And then if they don't want to achieve pregnancy, they have intercourse at the infertile days. And then once she comes to her fertile period, then they have to abstain. And one thing that uh, the natural family planning achieves is not just to achieve pregnancy or to avoid pregnancy, but it also helps in understanding maturity and self-control. Because when there's no self-control and all that, the process will be jeopardized. So it promotes self-control and also respect for the couples themselves that when the woman is fertile and you don't want to achieve pregnancy and she tells you that she's in a fertile period, you need to do what? You need to restrain or abstain from sex. So natural family planning also promotes abstinence. And abstinence is all about maturity and self-control. And I think we need to teach that and promote NFP in every quarters. Thank you. Okay, Madretto, let's take some this questions is great, that Father. some people have sent. Okay, well, let's Father, talk, can, yeah. can, can you read from there? Yeah, okay, let me read before we take questions from those that are raising hands. Yes, we have uh, Blitz, Edgar, we have Mary, we have Dr. Jude, we have Martins, all these are raising their hands. Okay, Cornelius Plus, asks, but... please, I'm, I'm reading questions here. Okay, okay, how long should How long should a woman wait after sex before resuming sex? I present that over breastfeed. to you. Other doctors here can also respond. There are so many doctors here. They can respond. But let's hear from the presenter first. Father, take the question again. How long should a woman wait after birth before resuming sex? Okay. After birth. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, there are doctors. Yeah, I can see doctors. It's, it's, it's not tough. It's not tough. It has been a recurrent question. So the doctors question. can help us. Yeah, doctors okay. can help us. Doctor help us. Let's call Dr. Matthew. Dr. Matthew help us. <laughs> After Dr. Matthew, we hear from Dr. Dr. Olivia. Dr. Olive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father. Uh, let me first congratulate uh, the presenter, uh, Sao Jogbo, for a very wonderful presentation. A uh, very sensitive and interesting topic. I know he had to travel, and uh, thank you very much, sir, for making it. And thank God for Johnny Messis. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes, back to the question. Uh, normally, after normal spontaneous vaginal delivery, after about six weeks, most of the changes during pregnancy return to normal. So after about six weeks, if the woman consents and the man is also in agreement, they can resume sex. But after operation, if the woman delivers by surgery, cesarean section, uh, we want the woman to really have some good uh, rest to be able to recover. So a couple of months, two, three months, will be adequate for the woman to have fully regained herself. But it's something that both of them should, you know, really be able to determine. Uh, if the woman wants more time, like I said, the man has to be patient and understanding. And don't forget, mutual consent is important. So, but definitely it's something that can be done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Father. The next question. Okay, before the next question, Dr. Jude, maybe you want to add to that. Dr. Jude is raising hands. Dr. Good Jude. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. I'm actually Dr. Jude Kubo uh, from Kaduna, NDA Kaduna. The question I asked is actually on the platform. I want to 
emphasize okay, on that. Okay, don't worry. Question. Let me read it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let me read it. Okay, thank you. To save time. Yeah, to save time. Uh, the question from, okay, this question is from Dr. Matthew. Is there a situation where rape can happen in marriage? Dr. Matthew asks this, so we can respond to that quickly. Presenter. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Matthew, yes, rape happens in marriage. If for any reason, the, 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 it could be the man or the woman, it's not at that time uh, psychologically disposed to having sex. And the other, the other spouse, in most cases, the man actually, insists and has his way. It is rape. It's just that most women will not report that, but it is rape. Thank you. Okay, next question. Sex is something spouses must enjoy. At what point is sex this interesting to spouses? Question from Dr. Jude. Did you get um, the question? I'm thinking, <laughs> rolling the question on my head. Can you don't repeat it further? Okay, sex is something spouses must enjoy. At what point is sex this interesting to spouses? <laughs> oh, yes. It, um, when we say it's this interesting to spouses, both ways, either one of them is disinterested or both of them have ceased to have interest in sex, which will actually be a good one because two of them are mutually agreeing to stop sex. The problem lies <laughs> where one. one of them is interested and the other is disinterested. It, it, it's, for me as a person, I don't think at any stage in life, I tell people, if people who a married, happy married couple married for 50 years, maybe they're in their 60s, 70s, and they still enjoy sex. They should and have their sex. But there are some people who, uh, at a much 50-something, uh, 60-something, they start getting this interest. It's not a, it, it could be for women, it could be men, of course. They are, uh, hello. I don't think there is a, I don't think at any time, uh, maybe out of age, as people age, they not that they lose interest because sex is not just the intercourse proper. Let me clarify that. Little caresses and holds and they they liven up the yeah. marriage. So um, I don't think people should get disinterested in uh, themselves. I wouldn't want to use the word sex now. Husband and wife. Spouses should not get disinterested in each other. They should at one, at almost every time till they do them part, want that pleasure of staying by your spouse. It may not involve intercourse, but just wanting to be there and chat. Those are that's that was the way I put it. Maybe somebody can throw better light on that. Okay, I now invite uh, I would like to say something to Abigail. Thank you, Father, let's, for giving let's me hear the from opportunity. Professor Abigail, yeah. Vice President, you, National Association of Catholic Doctors. Oh. Thank you, Father. Uh, in addition to, just want to say that I'm both with the university and I'm a, I'm a consultant with the hospital. I want to respond to some of the questions, just to add one or two things. The first person that asks about sex after bed, I think is looking at it maybe from the spiritual aspect because he's one of our doctors in the Diocese of Joss. So maybe I think he's related to the spiritual aspect of it. Uh, this last question from uh, do the doctor from NDA, I want to look at it for it's maybe three basic umbrellas. One, why would somebody be disinterested later? I want to say one, the union... <laughs> Abenition may be on false, 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 false re reasons for the union. Why did I say so? You are just attracted to somebody for a reason that is not out of love. Okay, the, the man is rich, the lady is rich, she's from a good background, different reasons which may not be built on if, sex. And infatuation. 
Mommy, mm-hmm. please, can you hear me? We are sure. hearing you. Oh, sorry. I mean, the first reason may be, may be that the union from the beginning was false. It's not love that brought them together. So maybe a, a reason based on the man is rich, the girl is tall, she's fair. And if these virtues disappear, the love will decline. The attraction will not be there. Secondly, there are physiological reasons. As a woman, as both of them grow old, for a woman, for example, when she's getting close to some certain things, some changes may come in. Yes, like when she gets to the extreme, towards the extreme, the, these premenopausal features may affect hormones and this may re- reduce her libido. Some other disease conditions may also affect the libido of one partner or the other. So what somebody said, I think a female once said communication. It is very important to know, to have to communicate with one another and to know what our areas. For example, if a male is, is hypertensive and is placed on antihypertensive, which may affect the libido or which may affect the manhood, let me put it that way, that he may not satisfy her. She may feel disinterested. That's another reason. Then uh, distractions from outside, which most couples blame on devil. Distractions, we've noticed, because apart from this, I'm a reproductive health specialist. Most couples, when they go into union, they are so attracted to each other. But most of the female, when they've given birth to one, two, they feel there is no reason why they should keep on or oh, being good, maintain themselves, which is what I tell most of people, it's not like that. Make yourself happy, what he likes, wear, what he, he loves, wear it for him, even at home. But most women, oh, that one is for them, is for the girls. No, make yourself presentable to your spouse. So I think this may be some of the reasons I feel and which we've been seeing. But if you give me permission, can I just ask the question that I typed on the on the platform so that I don't raise Please my do. hand up again? Thank you, One Father. minute. One minute Thank so you, that you can ramp up. I want to conclude. So. My question is that, please, what would be your response? I'm not directed to anybody, either you or the presenter. What would be your response to a situation when one partner persistently commits adultery despite the other partner's availability? Thank you, and thank you, the presenter. It was a very nice presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, because of time, uh, Jera, many people are raising hands, and we have spent one hour, 10 minutes. If you have question, just put your question in the chat. Let me read it out so that it can be responded to, that we may you know, spend not spend more time. All those that are raising hands, please. Mine is contributional. Okay, Father, please, you, you may drop the comp, uh, contribution in the chat so that we don't spend more than the time allocated. Uh, please just drop your comments, your questions on the chat. I'm going to allow only three persons raising hands. Okay, all the one, two, three, there are five persons raising hands, please, one, one minute each. Others can now drop their comments and questions in the chat. One minute each, please. Let's take from Mary, after Mary, Jude, Engineer Para, Victor, then Fara Joseph. One minute each so that we can round up. Mary. Hello, good evening. Um, my name is Mrs. Mary Benedict OJ OP from Yaba, Lagos. All right, now we'll see. Uh, so I'm oh. going to China, so let's move on. Let's move on. The priest is so the men seems to be more um as spoken to about this sex or uh, more disposed to do. Now there is this aspect of um, we are talking about sensual sensuality, that sex. Then father just mentioned something the purpose of sex should be to have must have two purposes. One, one of the purposes is um, 
of Greek. My question is this, what about in a situation whereby either of the spouses, either of the spouse now can no longer procreate in the sense of, for the woman in a situation whereby the womb is cut out, though after the marriage now, what about a situation whereby the man now has no sperm count, no sperm within the marriage? Should sex be? I want the the speakers to throw more on this because it is also. Um, it's also an issue that is confronted in marriage. I've seen several. Okay. Um, Modesto, can I respond? Please do. Okay. I. The scenario you just painted. You see, marriage is for better for worse. And if what you are saying occurred after the marriage, it does not in any way. Let me give an example of the woman who has uh, reached uh, menopause and cannot. That does not mean she cannot enjoy sex. So life continues. And most cases, if the woman had reached that stage, she, back at the beginning of my talk, I said for procreation, pleasure, and joy. That does not mean that if you, a man of uh, 60 and a woman of uh, 65, uh, 55, who the woman has reached menopause can, does not mean they cannot enjoy themselves. The other one of low sperm count, that does not mean the man, if she's a natural thing, he has low sperm count, if he cannot be treated, I don't see what he can do. But that does not mean he should have, he not have a good sexual relationship with his wife. Two of them should be able to understand each other as long as they are talking to each other and they tell themselves the truth. It's only in a case where this person knows he has low sperm count and marries the woman. And then that's where there's a problem. There's a problem because she has lied to the woman. That's my comment on that. There should be no time when um, they cannot have enjoy have sex. It's not just for procreation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Modreto, for that. So, Sister Mary, I hope you are you got the response that having low spam count is not the reason not to have um, that sexual intimacy. Okay, so that is it. There's no so much to say about that. Okay, so the next person before the next person, let us take the question on the chat. Uh, moderator. I took off that from you because of time. I want us to save time. Yeah. Um, I agree, Father. Accept it. Okay. There's a question raised by Doctor uh, Professor Abu, which we we have responded to. She asks. I'm trying to look at the question again. Okay. Please, what will be your response to a situation where one partner persistently commits adultery despite the other partner's availability? Uh, Father, uh, uh, Professor, that's a very uh, tough question. If somebody persistently commits adultery, the person has a serious problem. Um, I hope the spouse does not know because that would be of such a marriage. But the fact that he, does not, he or she does not know that the partner, if he or she does not know that the partner is committing adultery, I expect their life will just go on. But if one of them discover the, or the uh, other partner discovers, it's a very dangerous thing. Uh, I think the person committing adultery requires real spiritual counseling by his uh, uh, pastor, marriage resort, professional counseling. Somebody in a marriage cannot persistently be committing adultery. Then that person does not want that marriage. Thank you. Okay, Father Joseph, I know we'd like to add something to this. So please use one minute to make your contribution, Father Joseph. You are already muted. We can't hear you. You are muted. Okay. 
Why I raised hand. my hand was on the question concerning why one partner is disinterested in sex. Mine, I want to take a different dimension. Uh, one, it could be as a result of personal hygiene. <laughs> no. Yes. Personal hygiene matters a lot. Let's say the man drinks too much and he comes in drunk and every time he's drunk and comes home and he wants to meet with his wife, certainly that may put the woman off, okay. which has happened because we've have cases like that. There was a time I had interactions with couples and all that yeah. and the result was centered about hygiene and it's also a case. Another could be the issue of one partner not being satisfied every time the couples meet. Okay, the issue of not reaching orgasm and things like that. And you hear, well, and you know, these are cases that could lead one to the issue of infidelity. But for the issue of one not being satisfied, that can be communicated, that can be discussed, and then they can understand themselves. And there are certain things that they can also do to arrive at that peak if they really want it or to seek for some medical assistance to okay. solve that issue. So it's not all about menopause or person reaching the old age. There are other factors that could make one get disinterested in the issue of, uh, of, uh, of, of sex and all that. So I think it's good we look at these dimensions also. And then concerning the question of, uh, of, mm. of infidelity, the question has to be asked, why is the man unfaithful? There could be factors. Or the woman, father, or the woman. Uh -huh. Why is the man or the woman unfaithful? It is not just, uh, it, it's a problem, yes. But the problem has a root. Was he unfaithful even before they get into marriage and all that? Because there are certain things couples or intending couples need to know about each other. If the person has been a womanizer even before they get married and all that, there is no, uh, there is no tender, there is no, uh, uh, how will I put it now? Assurance that he will stop even in the marriage. And one who has been that, or a, the woman who has been flirting with other men and the rest of them, may not stop even after the marriage. Some they know that. This person is this even before the marriage, and then they expect the person to change automatically. The, the, the union does not change a criminal into a set automatically, but it's something that they need to continue to do what to work on and help each other. So I feel that there are factors that may have led to that, and that has to be looked into, not just scratching the surface, but going deep into the issue and into the root cause of that infidelity so that it can be solved and also resolved. Okay, that is my Father. own take. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Victor, you have been raising hands. Victor, briefly, okay. please. Um, okay, Father. My my question is um, based on um, a particular incident that happened once, once upon a time in um, one of the parishes. Um, a particular man complained of her husband um, asking her to give him a, a blowjob. So when you're talking about sexual purity, is giving your husband that kind of um, blowjob a, a bad thing or trying so many positions when um, uh, com uh, engaging in the act of um, sex? That's what I want to ask. Okay, I'm going to respond to this very quickly. Uh, there is no other thing. So according to church's teaching, okay, uh, sexual acts should not be done in an animalistic manner. It is something honorable, and it has to be done in an honorable way. Nowadays, if I, someone asked me questions some years ago, before I was on then the priest, about having sex through the armpits, maybe some of you have not heard it, a man is asking his penis to the woman's armpits. So there are so many terrible things happening. Of course, we have the anal sex, or as uh, sometimes they may even develop the one of, of nose. There can be penetration in the nose and all kinds of animalistic way people are using to, you know, uh, engage in sexual. And the church teaches that it should be done in an honorable way and it should be open to procreation. So having it in the armpits, having it in the, in the mouth, having it in the animals, all those are not open to procreation and okay. they are not they are not honorable way. 
of engaging in sexual acts. So the church holds on that that says, you know, in marriage has to be vaginal sex, not ampit sex, not anal sex, not oral sex, and all of that. Okay. So let us leave it at that way. You can confirm, maybe I will send you a catechism on sexuality written by the Catholic Bishop Conference, the Catholic Bishops of Ibadan Ecclesiastical Province, a catechism on sexuality. It was well explained in that. Please let us note that. Hmm? We now take Engineer Opara. Please, very brief. Engineer Obara, you'll be raising hands. One minute. Okay, so we now read out other questions in the chat and we use it to end. Okay, Dr. Yes, Chuchi, you'll be raising hands. One evening, minute. Good evening, fathers. Good evening, good evening everyone. Yeah, please, uh, my question is very brief. Um, we, from my understanding from the faith and the Catholic teaching we are talking about, uh, having an intercourse that result to and having a natural uh, uh, family planning. I now ask if by venture there is a sexual relationship for the purpose of, of creation, procreation, and eventually it, it led to a procreation that. Uh, the family does not really want this child to come into being. And originally, since the child does not encourage uh, other form of family planning, please, what could be the, the way out for such a couple? I don't know whether it is very clear, whether my question is clear. Um, Are you thinking of abortion? Yeah, that what I, I, thought that is, yeah. I am not talking about. I'm talking about is there any other option left for a couple when the natural family planning failed and eventually during their intercourse, one thing or another, and I now resorted to probably uh, that the wife have taken it. It's what okay. could be the it's, it's okay, engineer. Engineer, in that case, there is no nothing apart from conception, nothing. apart from giving birth. Hmm? Birth to the baby. Yes. There is no other solution we can talk about. That is when we start talking about uh, abortion, many other things. In that case, no child is a mistake. If you never intended to have a child, and eventually it comes, don't go for abortion. The question you ask is the question that many married people are asking, and they go for abortion. As I'm talking to you, I know of a woman who did that twice, abortion twice. Why? Father, you know, economic hardship and all those, so I have to get rid of. Please, conception is life. That is life given by God. There is no alternative saying, let us terminate it or what. In that case, as Catholics, as Christians, as pro-lifers, we stand on life. Once it happens, let the child be Thank given birth. That is what the church will respond, and that is what pro-lifers believe. Every other Thank thing, you. it is contrary to gospel teaching. It is contrary to Christian teaching. Well taken. Thank you very much, Father. Yes, and please. Yeah, Without Doctor Jude, one minute. We are rounding up. Doctor Jude, one minute. Okay. Uh, let's Jude, now go to the questions. You have you have finished, Doctor Jude. Okay, you are still raising hands. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let's read other questions here very quickly so we, they can be responded to by the speaker. The next question here is, one can be, okay, there is a comment, one can be discouraged from sex when one is not getting satisfaction from it. There are women who have never gotten orgasm. Thank you for your comments. What is the choice saying about the art of sexual activities? 
as there is growing complaints of dissatisfaction among couples. What the church is saying about sexual activity. What the church is saying about it is what we are doing in Catholic marriage forum here. So uh, there are many uh, facilitators of marriage in many dioceses. So the church organizes seminars and workshops to talk about sexuality, to teach married people about sexuality. So when it comes to that dissatisfaction among couples, that is the case, that is the topic everywhere on social media. People talk about that. So as a Catholic priest, just to let us know that the church, you know, shares the concern of married people when it comes to that dissatisfaction. And she makes efforts to, you know, help those in such situation by allowing marriage experts, you know, psychology doctors to help married people who are having issues uh, dissatisfaction. The church will not impose anything on you, but the church can help, you know, through seminars, workshops, counseling, and all of that. So when there is issue of dissatisfaction, as Father Joseph pointed out earlier, it calls for you know communication. Talk about it. Why is there dissatisfaction? And it can be taken care of, you know, by the couples themselves. That is a big question today. It has spoiled a lot of marriages. Just speaker, you want to respond to that, or the one I said is sufficient before you go to the next question. I think you covered it, Father. Um... Okay, the next one. How many days will you advocate for couples to have sex in a week or month. <laughs> yes, Father. I mentioned there that it is a which I said that even though St. Paul asks that we should um, do that, he was not explicit as to the duration. If uh, people like uh, St. Paul could not uh, hazard a guess, I would just say it depends on the couple. They can decide how many times. Actually, about 10 years ago, somebody asked me that question uh, indirectly. I said, how many times in a week or a month do you have sex? And I said, that's a, a tough one. It, it, it's, a, it's an individual thing. Every couple we know, they can even have sex every day if they want to, as long as they are capable. I don't think it's couple specific. Let me put it that way. It's not um, even the idea of uh, from the current uh, first Corinthians seven five. It says we should not tempt, tempt Satan. The, the indirectly he's telling us that we should. Uh, the frequency is determined by the couple. There are some couples that can stay one month no sex, but they are happy. There are some that can stay. It depends on the, uh, let me use the word libido of the, uh, the couple. Let me just put it that way. There's uh, there's no specific uh, amount of time or frequency for couples okay. to have sex. Thank you. The thing is that sex should be regular in marriage. So how you interpret yes. that uh, regularity, it depends on the couples. The couple, oh. yes, Father. Thank okay. You. Now, the next one is that, okay, somebody made a comment that some spouses, <laughs> especially ladies, are sometimes not disposed to sex at all. Ladies in the house, are you hearing? In a month, you can make advances and she ignores you and leads you to staying frustrated and worried. <laughs> that is a comment. We are not <laughs> saying anything on that. So it's not only for ladies, it's for men too. For men too. I think it is more on the <laughs> okay. I thought that is more from the male side than the, on the female side, but somebody saying it's more on the female side. So, dear ladies in the house, let us do what is needful, and men too. Men had important parts to play in sexual acts in marriage. Men need to know that they have important role to play. Exactly. Our men in the house, please take notes. Since there can be no time when sex can't be enjoyed by couples, how do we work with the billing methods? How do we work with the billing methods since there is no time when sex can't be enjoyed by couples? 
let somebody respond to this question, speaker or another person, you can respond. Father, when there's no time, I didn't get that. Since there can be no time, when says can't be enjoyed by okay. couples, please, the person that asks this question, you can unmute yourself no. and uh, talk about okay. it. Okay. Hello, Father. Mm. Good evening. I asked mm. the question. Hello, can you hear me? Sure. Yes, we are hearing your love. Okay. Good evening. I'm Mrs. Lillian Okafo from Enugu. I know. You mentioned you said some way far. Hello. Are you there? Father Joseph was saying something. Hello. Like, but that feelings. Hello, can you hear me, please? Yeah. We are just but hearing you. We lost you. Okay, sorry, please. But with the billings method. At least the one I during marriage course that I learned. It is Billings method. There's a period of time when the woman is fertile or not fertile. So, and if we leave sexual uh, relationship for when only the woman is not fertile to avoid pregnancy. So, what happens having sex during that time that she is fertile? So, how do we? do that i'm just i don't know if you understand now what i mean okay i think i understand you um like the uh, father father has also touched on this um it's one act of self-control and discipline if you don't want a baby then don't attempt having surgery during the fertile period and then restrict yourself to the um infertile period but if you decide to, well, I think I've put it clearly. It's just a case of self-discipline. It's just like when you agree to prayerfully not even have sex, even if it's an infertile period. But one needs to be disciplined in uh, this act of, uh, once there's an agreement between the man and the woman, they should be able to control that. But as of today, that's the only um, uh, option the church gives us regarding a contraception. Please, can I add something to that? Please do, very quickly. Yeah, please. When you have that, the cycle, after the menses, if for a long circled woman, there will be dry days. If the woman is chatting, there will be time when they can have in cycles before the peak, after the menses. But the, the, the other side of it, if the woman is short sighted, there will there won't be that. Uh, um, Window. dryness uh -huh, that dryness it will be after the peak can three days so hmm. for two weeks if a man is having intercourse for two weeks wouldn't that man rest for some time so <laughs> men listen are they not <laughs> okay so, uh, with the person that asked this person i'm going to send you the recorded video of the conference on natural family planning. The speaker did justice to that, uh, you know, about natural family planning. And so I hope you have sent your WhatsApp number. I'm going to forward Please, it Please, I need you. it also. Yes, I send it to you, Father. Please, the person that asked okay. this question, uh, just at the end of this conference, let me know your particular number so that it can be forwarded to you. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, Father. I'll do All that. Right. Okay, so because of time, um, let me just read out what we have here and conclude. Some men involved in pornography. Okay, before that, when can couples start intercourse at pregnancy? Our men need to be talked to. Speaker, did you get that? When, when can, can couples our start intercourse at pregnancy? Okay, I think the doctor should answer that. Yeah. Please, I, I call Dr. Olive. Dr. Olive, are you there? Dr. Olive, are you there? I think Dr. Olive is not a medical doctor. I know her. Ah, okay. I want another doctor to respond. Is there any other doctor in the house here? There are so many doctors, I mean medical doctors here, that's, that has not responded, that has not spoken. Please just commit yourself and respond very quickly. 
Hello, Father, if you want, I may say something about that. I'm not a Please medical do. doctor, but okay. out of experience. Please do. Okay, like, I use myself as an example. Like, when I was pregnant for my first baby, so there were times that, especially during that early pregnancy time, that I was having bleeding and things like that. So my doctor told me that when I, I'm in my first trimester, that we can avoid uh, any sexual thing at first, that first trimester. But after the first trimester, that we can continue. What is like trimester? Now? <laughs> okay. What is trimester? Uh, <laughs> Please tell us what is that. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, like the first, the first three. Let me use the word. The first three months of uh, uh -huh, that uh -huh. when you know you are pregnant. Exactly. Oh, first of... three months. Yeah. Yes, first three months. Yeah. That okay. we can stay away from, so that it will help. Uh, hey, so that it that bleeding will stop. All right. Uh, hey. All right. First, so, first three months. Okay. Yes. Some men involve some men involved in pornography, hence the subject just passes. Father, to Father we need to end that. Some because you have to stop it before the ninth month. The sexual intercourse cannot continue after the eighth month. Some because of certain problems or the other. Okay. Dr. Peter Kolawole, that at the ninth month there shouldn't be sexual intercourse. The, the woman is not. Some men involved in pornography has the subject as passes to different sexual positions, which is animalistic. That is true. I men need to be talked to. Hmm? Uh, just a suggestion or recommendation with the way the world is evolving. The child needs to do a lot during the marriage course before wedding because most persons are carried away by the wedding ceremonies and not really ready. Yes for the marriage. That is very true. Uh, Father Joseph, you are here. I'm here too. Father Innocent, you are welcome. I'm happy that there are priests among us here. Uh, there are reverences that too. So we need to do more in our apostolates, in our parishes and uh, in our pastoral activities to let people know more about this. That's not only to do wedding, but they should also prepare very well, you know, when it comes to what they have been taught. And again, the way marriage course is being taught in some parishes is something that as a church, we need to evaluate. Okay. Father I Joseph, don't know if I can say something hands. on this, Father. Okay, it's very uh, brief. Yes, it's just on this, it's just on this issue now. Um, in our last meeting of coordinators, of family and human life in the month of May. There is a new marriage handbook that has been approved by the Catholic Bishops Conference, which we've been working for, for for the period of some years and it has been approved. And the marriage handbook now is for all dioceses to use. And it is actually comprehensive. It is now on sale. And some dioceses have started stepping it down. Like my diocese, we are going to have a seminar for marriage course instructors very soon next month, and it's to step it down. And when you go through the handbook itself, it's actually comprehensive. And the idea is to harmonize marriage course in all dioceses, so that wherever you go, you'll discover that it's the same thing that is being taught in dioceses and in parishes. So just like you said, it is the duty of the priests and the parish priests now to see how to step down this marriage course handbook that has been made for them. And again, in addition to the handbook, there's the instructor's guide that has made it easier also for instructors to be able to teach what, uh, what is contained in the handbook. So it's good that we know and then we begin to ask questions where to get the handbook. You can always get it from the Catholic Bishops Conference, I mean, from the Catholic uh, Secretariat, and also from the Diocesan Coordinator of Family and Human Life, because these things are, are available now. And I think it's actually good because I've gone through it and it's comprehensive. And if that is being taught in all parishes, I think it will solve this issue of uh, 
uh, of marriage course and uh, things like that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Many people are asking how to get the books. So to get the book, you can get it via your Diocesan Marriage Coordinator. Uh, Father, maybe if you or have from the some... County Secretariat in Abuja. Or County Secretariat, okay. But if you have the contact of anyone yes. in Nigeria, I'm not in Nigeria, who has, uh, who can be reached to, maybe the person can shift it to those who are interested. You can send the contacts in the chat so those who are interested can get the contacts. Uh, thank you I so have much. I some already. Okay, you have some already. Maybe you drop your contacts here. Those I who do. need it may, may call your phone and ask how to do that. You can, Father, you can drop your contact right now. Okay. People are asking how to get it. They can reach you via uh, phone. Thank you so much, uh, our participants. Thank you, our dear speaker, Sir Andrew uh, Ojobo. You have really done justice to the topic. Thank you, and God bless you. May God continue to enrich your knowledge, grant you your heart desires, bless your family in everything your family calls. Amen. That's my prayer for Amen. you. Amen. 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 I appreciate, Amen. I appreciate all our contributors. Amen. Our medical doctors in the house who contributed, I appreciate you. All those who contributed, those who asked questions, our priests in the house, the reverend sisters, everyone, I appreciate you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Very briefly, this is Catholic Marriage Thank Forum. For you. those joining us for the first time, Catholic Marriage Forum is an online apostolate directed, founded and directed by myself, Reverend Father Tedu Sanyebo, OP. It is more of online. We do our apostolate via online, having monthly conferences in Zoom. On Zoom, you can follow us on YouTube to get the videos of the past conferences. Then we have a WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group was created for all the participants of this conference. So if you have not sent your WhatsApp number, you can send it now so that you can be added to the WhatsApp group. This video will be the record of this conference will be sent in the WhatsApp group and it will be sent in the YouTube. The YouTube name is Catholic Marriage Forum. You can go to the YouTube and see what we are doing here. Okay. Thank you and God bless you. The next conference will be uh, on August, first week of August. I'm going to announce the topic and the date precisely in the WhatsApp group. Thank you and God bless you. We now say the closing prayer. Is there any question or anything somebody wants to ask about before we now conclude this final prayer? Okay. I now invite. I just wish my... more publicity. What? I just wish more publicity be made so that a lot of questions will be reduced and Christian home will be uh, more, uh, more or less pure in their actions and what they do. Okay, publicity can be done by all of us. So once the flyer is out, help us to publicize it by sharing it in your social media handles and inviting others. The publicity can only be done by us. I will try my best as I can to publicize it, but let us cooperate, cooperate with us in this apostolate when it comes to publicity. Thank you. I now invite uh, Father Innocent. I can see Father Innocent just joining. Father, please, can you lead us in closing prayer and final blessing? Father Innocent. <laughs> Okay. Um. All right. So I now invite Father Joseph. Father Joseph, please lead us in closing prayer and final blessing. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was yes. in the beginning, yes. beginning yes. now, now and never shall it be. 
Amen. Amen. God our Father, we continue to praise and to thank you for your goodness and your blessings. We thank you for being with us throughout this presentation, discussions, and also contributions which you've made concerning this important sacrament, the sacrament of marriage. We ask you, God our Father, may you help us to understand the depths of this sacrament, which is also a mystery. The couples will continue to be united more closely to you and to each other, and to be able to live out their lives uh, in true vocation, imitating the love between Christ and his church. Give them understanding, grant them uh, the spirit of patience to more closely to each other and to you, whom they represent Amen. as witnesses in, their, in the world. Continue to help Amen. them to resolve their differences and also challenges that come with this sacrament so that they may live Amen. out their married life in love, in happiness, and in peace. Bless us Amen. and also help us to be uh, evangelizers and also promoters of, of life and also of the true married life, so that in our apostolate Amen. and work, people may have peace and also enjoy married life in such a way that will help them to grow in the knowledge and fear of you. As we retire Amen. to go back to, to sleep and to rest for the night, may he grant us a perfect night and a, also a wonderful night rest. And all Amen. to the great name. This we pray through Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 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 May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank and you.